Another thing I want to address is science. Now, atheists, all you atheists love to get really, really gay for science, and I'm not exactly sure why. I mean, you really do. You love to talk, oh, science is so awesome, and science is this and that. Science is neither here nor there. Okay? Science is good insofar as it works. Insofar as it's sufficient rational explanations for, you know, for things. Which enables us to build stuff and make cars and internets and cool stuff like that. Great. Science works. Keep in mind, this is exactly the mistake that was made in the 1700s and 1800s. Not, coincid not uncoincidentally, when atheism started to gain real strength as a movement. People started getting gay for science. Started thinking science itself was going to save humanity. Hence, we do not need God. Because science is what is going to liberate humans and save us from the human condition. Now, it could not be more crystal clear by the history of the 20th century that this was a fallacy and illusion. How you are still gay for science after having lived through the 20th century that this world lived through is beyond me. The Nazi scientists were the equal in every way, shape, and form as the American scientists. Every way, shape, and form, they were just as good. Scientists created nuclear weapons. What does this prove? Science alone is insufficient for delivering man from human nature. Science divorced from spiritual understanding or moral integrity can destroy us. That was as clear as day in the 20th century. And yet we still have atheists who are gay for science. Like science is going to save anybody. It isn't. Prior to me becoming a Christian, I said something to my, I, I had this, this conversation with my father. We were in Czechoslovakia of all places. And I remember we were drinking dark beers and I said to him, if the spiritual condition of man does not catch up or the moral condition of man does not catch up with our scientific knowledge, human, humanity will destroy itself. That was before I was a Christian. That's not a very radical concept. That's a no-brainer. Just think it through. The moral condition of humanity and the spiritual condition of humanity have not kept league with our scientific knowledge. That is why we have discrepancies wherein we are capable of destroying ourselves, but we are not capable of, you know, even solving hunger. Because the moral and spiritual condition of mankind has not kept pace with scientific achievement. Now, I said that before I was a Christian, and that's a no-brainer concept. Anybody would hear that and go, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Prior to now that I become a Christian, it makes a lot more sense to me why. Because the argument is the Bible is that it cannot. Man cannot, in and of itself, be, generate the spiritual condition necessary to govern the planet successfully. That's the argument of the Bible. That our, our moral, that our carnal natures are too strong. We cannot, in and of ourselves, generate the moral and spiritual qualities necessary to govern the planet successfully. Look at the planet we live in today and tell me that on some level that's not obvious. Look at the, look at the, the current occupant of the White House. Most of you are liberal, you hate Trump, look at him. Do we, honest to God, honest to God, have what it takes in our own human beings morally, spiritually, intellectually, to govern ourselves successfully. The argument of the Bible is we do not. We require a savior. We require a God. We require instruction. We require illumination. We require somebody to show us the way. Now, that person would be Jesus Christ, quite obviously. But that is the argument.